Well, welcome to the first edition of Hilltop Conversations. It's a new weekly broadcast with conversations about the life of the church body at Hilltop, local outreach, and missions. Now, this is in addition to our worship service on Sunday and the Wednesday evening Q&A that Kurt hosts. Now this week we're going to begin by having an update from Tammy Brower and Petra Sever about some local outreaches to heroes in our neighborhood that are serving us during this crisis. Next, Lisa Potts, our secretary, is going to tell you about a 40 days of prayer in which you can participate. And then finally, we're going to hear the first of a two-part interview with Courtney Crotz, who recently spent two months in Ireland and in Lebanon. Now, life for most of us is probably being spent indoors, and we pray that you remain healthy and safe. Now, many people can't stay at home. There are lots of people that are serving us. People like our medical professionals, first responders, that would include uh, firemen, sheriffs, deputies. Then there's grocery store workers, custodians, cleaners. There's all kinds of people that are taking care of us so that we can remain home and healthy and safe. And they are risking possible exposure to this virus. And people all across the country have been coming up with novel ways to thank these individuals. And here at Hilltop, we have, and we're doing this uh, in Jesus' name and on your behalf as well, we've been buying lunch. Uh, kind of a small gesture, but it's, it has a pretty big impact. First, we're we're finding restaurants that are struggling to stay open with their takeout business and so we we get lunches from them and then they go to um, a whole variety of these local heroes and you're going to hear from Tammy and Petra about that right now. Petra and I wanted to uh, update you on uh, what is happening in our community as Hilltop Church is used um, in, I think, powerful ways um, to minister God's love to the people around us. And so Petra and I are going to try to uh, bring you up to date and I hope this is just a time of family time really just to bless you uh, know what's happening and um, and thank you for your part in this uh, Petra share about what is happening with uh, uh, Dream Center okay so the Northern Nevada Dream Center is um, an organization in Carson City that um, we have been supporting in various ways and um, we've contacted them to find out um, what their needs are at this moment in time and there are two ways that you can help if you um, choose to do so. The first way is by a virtual food drive and um, if you go to their website it's nndreamcenter.org you can donate money and it'll tell you how many meals um, that that amount of money will provide for. Mm -hmm. um, so and I think you'd be amazed how far a little bit of money uh, will stretch for a family. Um, the other way that you can donate is we are planning to do a food drive here at Hilltop. We're going to put um, our blue barrel out um, outside, outside the front doors of the youth building. And you can donate um, non-perishable food items. Um, we're asking if you could do that on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays um, between nine and three, our business hours. And then we can um, take those to the Dream Center um, a little bit later on in the week. And um, they are, particularly asking for canned meats, chili soups, um, canned fruits, cereals, things along that line. If you have something perishable like meats, you can donate that as well. And then we'll be sure to get it refrigerated and take it to them. 
And then um, share with everybody about our homemade masks that are coming into the church. Oh, yes. Okay. What a blessing that mm -hmm. is. Um, we have had about five different women that have um, made masks uh, for the healthcare, healthcare workers and grocery store workers. And um, what a blessing that mm -hmm. has been. And we've mm -hmm. just, we've put a little note of encouragement for them um, in the packets mm -hmm. with the masks. And um, it, it's truly been a blessing to see how the body of Christ mm -hmm. has worked. <laughs> mm -hmm. I yeah. took some of those masks uh, Monday um, to Save Mart in Carson City. And um, at, when I came in the door, uh, some of the workers noticed me and noticed that I had these masks. And I cannot tell you how thrilled they were, mm -hmm. Petra. It was mm -hmm. just, it was oh, just truly sweet. a gift to them to know that that there was a church in their community that was praying for them and and cared about them mm -hmm. in such a practical mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And yeah. so um, thank you to the ladies in this church that have been uh, busy sewing for us. That we really <laughs> appreciate it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really neat to watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. So you want to remind them a little bit about our, our packets. Too, oh, yes. But, yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, we have these care packages um, here in the front office at the church. They have a $25 gift card for Walmart, little Bible in there, a note of encouragement. Anybody can pick them up mm -hmm. here at the church and you can give them to um, you know, your hairdresser that is out of work or a restaurant employee or y anyone. Okay. Tammy, why don't you tell us about someone that you, mm -hmm. that you gave this mm -hmm. to? Um, I know a single mom in our community down in Gardnerville who um, is a hairdresser by day and a waitress at night. She's, she's a single mom of a little boy and can you imagine losing both of your jobs? I mean, mm -hmm. one is hard enough and, and just barely gets by. And I reached out to her when this first happened and told her that uh, I wanted to help her through our church in a practical way. And uh, she just was um, thrilled. Uh, I've been talking to her about the Lord for probably this last year. And then in such a, a neat way to see the love of Christ, I just uh, uh, reminded her that she was loved by God and that people here at the church were praying for her. Mm -hmm. And um, I just can't wait to see what the Father does next with my mm -hmm. relationship with her. So I just encourage you to just keep turning to the Lord and, and see what he has for you um, in this this time of, of uh, outreach that we probably will never have again maybe in our lifetime so it's it's pretty exciting mm -hmm. okay so there there's just some really um, neat opportunities our church is having right now and again I said this before as I've had opportunities to talk to the church it's all because of your generosity uh, again, it's, it's your giving that has provided this. And I think it's important for you to know uh, where this money is being used. And most of all, it, it's a, a time to be in prayer as we reach out to these different organizations in our community. Uh, most of you know that we did reach out to Carson Tahoe Hospital. Those 200 uh, meals were delivered. We got beautiful thank you cards from them uh, with some really encouraging words. In fact, Petra, mm -hmm. why don't you read just a few things that were said on that card? Mm -hmm. This one says, you touched our hearts. Thank you for your generosity and compassion. We appreciate it more than you know. Here's another one that says, thank you so much for your encouraging words and for providing us with the lunch. So kind of you. Take care and God bless you. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Pretty neat. So, and there, there was, oh gosh, like I said, they had to send two cards. So there was a lot <laughs> of nice things said. Um, we're getting ready next week to uh, outreach to the East Fork Fire uh fighters, Douglas County, and that's 90 lunches that will be going out. Again, each thing we send out has a, a word of encouragement that we're praying as a church. 
And then the rabies employees in Gardnerville will be uh, receiving 30 meals. Quad County Emergency Center, 30 meals. Uh, and uh, they've also received masks. And then Community Counseling Center will be receiving 16 um, lunches. Uh, talk to Karen Beatty at Community uh, Counseling Center. Uh, Karen Beatty attends church here. And uh, you can just imagine uh, what they have been facing with uh, the situations of, of people uh, anxious, worried, stressed, and, and all of those kind of things. So we thought that that was a great place to love on those workers there that are really on overload with trying to take care of other people. And so um, that's, that's kind of what is happening. Oh, I know one more thing. We've had over $1,000 go out uh, in gift cards, uh, and, and they're still going out to, to people that have needed them. Um, they've gone to restaurant owners, people in our church that needed extra help. Uh, I don't know who else, but more people than I can think of. But uh, just know that, that we are uh, giving out those gift cards to help others. Thank you. Thank you so much for that update, Tammy and Petra. Now remember, starting Monday, we will have the Dream Center Blue Barrel right here where I'm standing, right out in front of the youth building. And uh, it will be ready to receive your donations from 9 to 3, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Now, if you bring something uh, perishable, please give uh, the office a call so that we uh, can pick that up and make sure that it's refrigerated. They, uh, they mentioned they are out of meat, so that's something that they would really enjoy receiving. Now, those of you who know Lisa Potts know that she has a real heart for prayer, and she is going to tell us about a, a guide to 40 days of prayer about the situation that we're in in our country, and it, it's really a time to intercede, and she's going to explain that to us. Hi. In these interesting and very challenging times that we're in, I have really felt that it is important for us to rest and also to pray. So we've designed for you a special packet that includes a time to pray, a 40 day prayer journey. Each day in the prayer journal, it has a verse, from Psalm 23, 24, and 25, and also a thought to ponder or an action to take. It also has some creative um, prompts in there, like one of them, which is called Journey with the Sheep. On one of the days, you get to draw the path that the sheep take in Psalm 23. It also has a coloring sheet and um, will help you to process some of the emotions you may be having during this challenging time and also pray for those in your neighborhood, in the medical world, um, even in our government leadership. Um, each day you'll be walking through a 40-day journey and um, at the end of it, I my prayer is that God will have helped you to use this time wisely and prayerfully. You can pick up your creative packet at the church office Monday through Thursday, 9 to 3 p.m. And um, we'd be happy to get you praying. Thanks, Lisa. We are praying that after 40 days, we'll be able to meet together in person. Now, that's obviously out of our control, but we can sure pray that that uh, happens. Courtney Krotz is a, both a Douglas High and a UNR grad with a heart to share the love of Jesus Christ with people around the world, and she has acted on that. Uh, Courtney has, through Youth with a Mission or YWAM, she has twice gone to Ireland and then to Lebanon. And her most recent trip was January and February. Uh, she taught 
school to Syrian refugee children in the coastal city of Tyre in Lebanon. We have a two-part interview with her about uh, all that happened during her trip, and we're going to hear part one tonight. Well, hi. Uh, we are here with Courtney Crotz, and she, just before all this lockdown kicked in, mm -hmm. she returned from Lebanon and... Uh, and Ireland. And Ireland, too. <laughs> right, right, right. From Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, technically, and then Lebanon. Well, welcome, and thank, thank you. you so much. What you didn't see behind the uh, scenes was the chaos that <laughs> ensued prior to this. That's good. Well, um, <laughs> tell us just a little bit about yourself, Courtney. Well, um, I am ra born and raised in um, Nevada, and I have... Um, been doing missions for about two years now, almost two years, because um, I graduated University of Nevada in 2018, mm -hmm. um, that spring, and went directly into YWAM. What was your so, uh, major? Um, I majored in rangeland ecology and management. Wow! Wow! Now, have, <laughs> a you, long had title. A, have you had a chance to use that degree? Um, yeah, I've had a couple jobs um, that have um, lined up with that. So I worked for the state of Nevada with the Division of Forestry for a couple of years, um, Walker Basin Conservancy. Um, so I've had a couple of jobs in that line, mm -hmm. but. Um, but yeah, I, I know God's calling me to something different outside of that degree a bit. So, Well, yeah. and I want to return to that thought in a moment, but you just mentioned uh, that you've been involved with uh, YWAM Youth with a Mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, just tell us how that came about and, and what have you done with YWAM? <laughs> um, well, I um, got introduced to it um, three years ago now, so my, one of my mentors a few years ago in 2017 um, told me about YWAM and I'd never heard of it before and you know I was graduating that spring in 2018 and I had no idea like what I wanted to do with my life really. Um, and I've always wanted to travel before, before that I'd never left the states and so when she told me about YWAM I looked it up and I just really loved what they were doing. Um, I prayed about it quite a bit for a few months. I had a lot of friends praying for me and I just felt God tell me that's the right direction you wanted me to take. And so I applied for the one in Ireland and got in obviously mm -hmm. and the journey has been going ever since. <laughs> now this is the second time now it, mm -hmm. Ireland and Lebanon, you, you normally don't associate those in the same no. <laughs> uh, breath, but so obviously there's all. a connection. What, mm -hmm. what is it uh, as far as YWAM is concerned? And, and mm -hmm. I'm sure it in, involves your training for yeah. your, your mission in, yeah. some, in some fashion. So our um, leaders in YWAM in, in Sligo, Ireland, um, it's a, a couple, George and Gwyneth Rich, that run it. Um, they have been doing outreach to Muslim countries for decades. Um, and so they, they have a really big heart for the Muslim people. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they have, in their school, there's two possible outreach locations, and it's Lebanon or a country in North Africa. And, um, right, which we can't name for yeah. security, <laughs> security reasons. reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the past three schools have been doing Lebanon, mm -hmm. um, and so that's just where God's been wanting like our students and the staff. Right. Um, and so we, we've been partnered with a church there for a few years now in Tyre, and um, just been sending teams there um, since then. So. Wow, mm -hmm. tire. And so tell us again what you spent time in Ireland and then you spent time in Lebanon. How was the time in Ireland a preparation for that? Yeah, so um, yeah, our half our mission trip is in Ireland. Um, so we, it's because it's a school, so it's a discipleship training school, is what they do. And it's three months long in Ireland um, and it's it's kind of like Bible college condensed into three months almost. Wow. Um, and so uh, every single week the students are getting different topics um, and different teachers, whether from video or guest speakers. Um, and so it's everything from the Father Heart of God to um, hearing the voice of God to ministry gifts to the life of Jesus. Like it's just a whole breadth of things. Um, and so part of like 
um, my job as like a staff member this time around um, was to disciple these students through the entire course. So my outreach wasn't just in Lebanon, it was with our four students. Um, oh, so you were yeah. in a position of leadership. I was. In YWAM. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Wow. So, because my first time around in YWAM, um, I was a student <laughs> right. and then I was asked to come back um, by my leaders um, mm -hmm. on staff. Um, for this past fall, and I was like, okay, yeah, like I'd love to do that. And so, um, I, yeah, we had four students, and they were all between the ages of like 18 and 26, I believe. Um, three Americans, one um, Chinese Irish. And so, those four students for pretty much the entire trip were my main focus, mm -hmm. um, and just discipling them and you know, helping them to grow spiritually. And that was just such an honor for myself and my co-leader, Olivia. Um, mm. And so we, um, as staff, were discipling them and training them up. And then we started doing outreach prep for Lebanon. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't actually know if we were gonna go to Lebanon uh, until a few weeks before we left because of all the political stuff going on. Um, we, we were praying about it and we were planning for it, but we were, prepared to like change our plans but thankfully everything worked out and we were able to go there and we were safe but um so we can only like prepare the students as much as we can because until you actually go there like you know right. we can prepare them as much to a point but it's until they actually experience it now what did you feel Courtney um, were the most important things to prepare Mm -hmm. uh, your team members. Uh. I think learning the differences in culture is really huge mm -hmm. um, because they are a, um, we're a, we're a cold climate culture in like the West um, and so it's more about getting the facts and just getting to the point, you know. And they You <laughs> need to explain what you mean by that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a cold climate versus a warm climate. Okay, so okay. Um, a warm climate is a, it's a culture that's all about hospitality and putting people first and um, serving others. So um, for Lebanon, for instance, when you're going to families and houses, like they're going to treat you like family, they're going to serve you, they're going to give you food and drinks, um, like even until you can't have any more. Um, so, <laughs> and even if they don't know the right answer, so like if you ask for directions, um, if they don't know the right answer, they're going to try to give you one, even if they don't know it, because they want to help you. Right. Versus here in like a cold climate, um, if you don't know the answer, people are just going to say it. And it's not to hurt your feelings, it's just like, well, I don't know. So like, go on to the next person. Right, and that was, that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's very different. So those terms refer to the the personal interaction and less the, mm -hmm. the actual temperature and the climate? Yeah, it's not the actual temperature and okay. the climate, it's just the, the cultural temperature and the climate. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that was one of the biggest things we had to prepare them for, um, mm -hmm. and just like how to interact with um, the people over there. Um, mm -hmm. Because while Lebanon, as you know, has a fair amount of Christians, they're still in the Middle East and they still have those cultural tendencies that we don't. Um, so I think that was the biggest. Um, we tried to prep them a little bit with the language, but immersion is the best way to learn a language. So they learned more like on the spot yeah. of Arabic. Um, so yeah, and then I guess just the daily things, what we'd be doing over there, we kind of gave them mm -hmm. an outline so they wouldn't just be going in blind. Wow. So. And, and as I understand it, you have you have served at this school mm -hmm. uh, two times, correct? Yes. Yeah. And this school is located in Tyre. Yes, located in Tyre. So I'm sure you guys have read that name in the Bible a lot. Um, it's one of the southernmost cities um, in Lebanon, and uh, yeah, it was it was so much fun. I had a blast doing it. Um, it was definitely more on my plate as a staff member because I wasn't only helping to run the school and be a teacher, but I was taking care of my own students and like discipling them and you know kind of doing two things at once. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it was a different experience than my first one in that sense, mm -hmm. but um, it was also very similar because it was the same kids were there. Like when I came back to the school, most of the same kids were there and then a couple um, little ones came up you know, they're old enough now to come to the school. And mm. um, I remember the first day that we came back, um, or I came back to Lebanon, and the kids didn't know that I was gonna be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like, like, we opened the doors up and there's like a stairway they have to come up and then come around the corner. And I was standing there with my, my staff and my students. And the kids were just like, 
shocked. Like they were just so excited. They had no <laughs> idea that I was going to be there. And like, I just got the biggest like joy out of that. Like just to see their reaction and they remembered me and they were excited to see me and then to have like all these new people there. And um, yeah, their excitement was just contagious. Like they're just, they're such good kids. <laughs> Tell us about the students there. Um, what, what, student population uh, do they do they draw from what what makes yeah. this school unique um, so this school entire that um, our pastor runs there is all Syrian refugee kids mm -hmm. and so they're coming from just the refugee populations around Tyre and um, we teach kids that are typically from like the age of five to fourteen um, so as soon as they hit like teenagehood or <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they're too old um, for our school but that's the age range we teach um, we have three different classes um, so they're the little kids of like five to seven ish and then the mm -hmm. middle kids of like eight to twelve and then the older class um, is like that 12 to 14. Mm -hmm. So my first year there, I was in the middle class, and then this year I was in the older class, um, which was cool because a lot of my kids had gone, like, gotten sure. older. Um, and so we we pulled from those those um, populations of kids, and oh my gosh, we probably had like 50 to 60 students. Wow. Um, so yeah, somewhere around and, there. And where do those students and their family live? They are kind of spread out so a couple of the kids and their families live in like apartment buildings around Tyre if they can afford it. Um, their apartments still are not like anything you would have here <laughs> like <laughs> they're very basic structures um, and then most we, of the kids. We would probably consider them like a shed or something. Almost yeah, yeah. like somewhere wow. between that it's just but those are still way better than like the camps because mm -hmm. um, majority mm -hmm. of the kids um, live in like the, the camps. You've probably seen them on TV they're not the big like acres and acres of camps they're um, they're much smaller but they're uh, there's a lot of people packed into them. Like you'll have multiple families, mm -hmm. um, or like a husband with multiple wives and his kids like living in one tent, and they're very small, um, very crowded. When it rains, there's not a lot of insulation or like protection from the wetness and the weather. Um, so yeah, it's very very different from what we live over here. Hmm. And and what was your assignment in the school? What what age? Did you teach? I was teaching kids from like 12 to 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, I had, a, I had a good group of kids and you know, they're a bit older so they, they know more English because we were teaching them um, English, math, science, and art um, every week and the kids are great because they're very much like kids here, you know, they have a favorite subject and the ones they absolutely hate. Um, and so they'll be really excited, like math teacher, math, math teacher. Um, and they're like, no, today's English. And they're like, oh, Aww. like. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they, they know what they like. Um, but my class was, like I said, was better with English because they've been doing it longer mm -hmm. and just able to communicate. And one of my students, he's been in the school since he was like a kid, like a little kid, and it opened. So he was like my little translator for me because he was really good at English. So I was very appreciative of him, um, really sweet kid. And yeah, they were just wonderful. Thank you, Courtney, for your heart for the Lord and for others. Please be sure to join us next Friday for the conclusion of this interview. Don't forget the Blue Barrel for Dream Center donations starting on Monday and until we meet again stay safe and God bless you <laughs>